thank you for staying with us on TMI this Thursday morning. Uh, quickly, let's uh, put our conversation on the road. I'm joined by three gentlemen. Uh, I'll begin from my far uh, left uh, by way of introduction this morning. Engineer Mike A.K. is a public affairs commentator. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Engineer Mike A.K., thank you for coming on the program this morning. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. And next to him is uh, Curtis Obebo. He's a civil rights uh, activist. Uh, thank you, uh, Curtis, for joining Thanks us for on TMI. You. And then, of course, next to him is somebody who is also a very key and uh, prominent player in the civil service space, Osaze Edigi. Thank you as well You're welcome. for joining us on the program. So, uh, gentlemen, let's uh, begin uh, our discussion this morning. I'd like to begin with you, Osaze. Uh, I mean, you, you have been very active. You've been uh, in the forefront uh, as far as um, calling government's attention to very burning issues, salient issues. Yeah. All right, uh, is concerned. Let's look at those states, uh, for example, as it stands uh, today. How would you do an assessment of uh, the level of development in those states today vis a vis what the people uh, want to see, what the people have always expected? Well, uh, as you said, I've always been an advocate of good governance, mm. social justice, and human rights as it were. Uh, as of today, in those states, I don't think. The people of Edo, the people of Edo State are be able to get what their, their expectations are in respect of campaign promises made by the present administration. And this has been a recurring decimal over the years mm. that political leaders tend to make all manner of promises, all manner of uh, assurances, and at the end of the day, none or just a little of those promises are actually adhered to or, br or brought to bear. We are in a state currently where no much development is seen, no discernible development is seen today in the state. The roads are not there, the traffic lights are not working, the street lights are not there. As a matter of fact, the most born issue today is the issue of insecurity. There have been so many cries here and there as to why has government addressed the issue of kidnappings going on along our various express routes that connect to Bini City, like the Aguchi Road, the Bini Akure Road, the Lagos Road. So many of these things are giving people concerns. So it appears the government is docile. It appears the government have lost focus on what to do by making sure that Edo people actually get what they voted for. It's not possible. Uh, it's too early to uh, jump to a conclusion, given the fact that uh, some people would argue that the government is still uh, making efforts to settle down, uh, get uh, its foot on the ground, and then uh, hopefully in a short time we we'll start to see the manifestation of all of the efforts being made on the ground. No, that is not correct. Oh. Why I say that is not correct is we are looking at five years. Give me that, this the second tenure. Okay of the upper section. So in a sense, it's a continuation. It's a continuation. Mm -hmm. So one cannot use that as a yardstick or like a kind of uh, excuse for, for the people not to see the development mm -hmm. they actually aim for. Right. The insecurity issue we are looking at today, if not for the vigilante men mm -hmm. who are actually tried to, who have actually tried to, to reduce the level of insecurity in the Benin metropolis, and I also hear that these guys are, are, are not put under any payment. And the government collects 750 million naira every month as a security vote. What is this money used for? But is it really? I mean, let me take you up on the issue of uh, security vote, by the way. Mm -hmm. we've, read, we've heard figures yes. like um, 500 million. Yes. For the first time in my entire life, in 2018, yes. I got to see uh, the budget for those states, for example. <laughs> I, I saw where we clearly stated. Yes that security votes will be 500 million yes. per month. But again, you hear people say things like it has been jacked up. There's been an upward review. It is now 750 million. Yes. Can we really authenticate all of these figures? These things are out there. Mm. Budget documents are out there. Okay. And budget performances, mm. you can also have access to these documents. Okay. Because the, the new standards by some of these, uh, uh, like World Bank, mm. The new order to governments that 
they must upload their budget document on okay. their website mm, and mm. the performances as well. That so, way of uh, so encouraging so open governance. Open governance. So you mm. get to see some of these things at the general. A lot of us don't have time for things like that. So when a budget, like for instance, budget of 2020, mm. you can get to see its performances because when they are really 2021 budget, you see if the SYZ amount was released to for that particular item okay. in that budget document or not. So these figures are, are at the end. And one of the things that secretive votes is one of the items that is responded to amongst every other item in the budget document. Hmm. Because I don't know, because of it is not probable. Okay. It's not an item you probe. Hmm. It's not subject to investigation. So there's minimal scrutiny. It, it doesn't even appear, it doesn't even exist. Mm. There's no scrutiny, no probe, it doesn't even exist because they see it as an exclusive item that okay. shouldn't be, that so much questions should be asked about it, mm. that it has to do with the exclusiveness of the government or okay. the governor as the case may be. So that is corruption embedded mm. in, a, in, a, in an open document, so to speak. So the truth of the matter is where we are in a state today. Mm. A lot needs to be done. I'm going to allow you just to step on your brakes for a minute, and I'll get back to you in a, in a while. But Curtis, let me talk to you about KPIs, key performance indicators. A lot of persons have uh, advanced opinions about um, quality of leadership in those states, uh, development, and so on and so forth. And then you're asking yourself, by what standards do we judge the performance of the government in those states under Governor Gorbin Obasaki? I mean, judging from the civil society perspective, for example. Okay, uh, talking about the standard, mm. uh, the factors should be lo that should be right. looked into. It is uh, development is something that is very visible to the uh, uh, to the blind and audible uh, to the deaf. Mm. One will see if there is any uh, significant progress in terms of development. You will see it like uh, during under Sushumole, we saw the Red Roof Revolution and all that. Even as at that time, we were still very, very uh, uh, on the position that uh, 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 Shomole is still not mm. doing the right thing as expected. But we have seen recently that we are retrogressing instead of progressing. What could be described, I could best describe the uh, upper second led administration that uh, currently development is if in I due to the abysmal performance of Gordon Obaseki led administration. I would say generally that development is experiencing stagnation. Sorry, I, I, I just want to put this in so you can expand your narrative better. So persons have also advanced the argument of the circumstances that were associated with the movement of the governor from the APC to the PDP and all of the intrigues playing out within the PDP as it stands today, for example, from all that we continue to hear. Aren't those also factors that are in play in this narrative? So the, his, uh, the campaign from one political party to the other, another of the political structure have nothing to do with the development of the state or okay. his ability to come up with developmental programs. Mm. The problem we are seeing that the since that the state the, the governor is not concerned about the development or the well-being of the citizens of the state. Yeah, when well, we see the governor talk about these issues and uh, the passion about, with, with, with which he pursues these issues. Yes, this is five years gone. Talking about it, signing an uh, uh, MOU oh. doesn't transmit to bringing development to the people. Is the person going to use the next uh, the five years and the eight years of his administration to sign MOU, uh, MOU without seeing a visible uh, transmitting this uh, MOU into reality? Hey, the political structure has nothing to do. We are saying that it's not, more, it's not concerned about the development of Edo State. Now, the security aspect of it, we are experiencing uh, an episodic uh, growth in the state due to the uh, worsening security, because you cannot expect the, the, the state in an unstable environment like Edo State that will have serious security challenges to have any meaningful uh, development. Just recently that we, 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 saw, we saw on media that uh, it was showing a picture of uh, signing another memorandum of understanding with some uh, for, uh, foreign bodies that uh, they're going to build uh, a mall. Should they be talking, should the government of the state be talking about building a mall when that should be the responsibility of a council or of a local government council? It, the state government should be talking about a meaningful development. If you go to other states, you, you, it will be visible. Go to Port Harcourt, go to that, you will see 
like several flyovers being built. You see several infrastructural developments. But what are we to write home about in Edo State? You go to Sapley Road. If you are if you are applying through Sapley Road, you stay three four hours in traveling with a, within a, kilo, a two three kilometer. And the government have come out to say that you cannot use the state money to develop a federal a, a federal. Road. But, but that has always been the argument, even long before Obasanjo became governor of Edo State. We have seen a situation whereby. Lagos State, for instance, some time ago, the state, the federal government cut off allocation to 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 to, to Lagos State some time ago, and they were able to come up with uh, the, 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 with development. With the no state assistance right now, we are being very very unfortunate. We are like a child that have. Uh, whose both parents are not responsible or responsive. In a situation whereby a father will say, oh, uh, I will not buy a Christmas club for my child. And the wife will also say, oh, because your father, the father did not buy, I will not also buy. What will be the fate of that child? If the federal government have refused to, to listen or hearken to the, to the cries of the, the, the citizens, what, what should be uh, uh, the response of the government? Should the government also say, because the federal government did not do the needful, they will not also do the needful? Who are the people plying the, this yeah, through this uh, supply road, for instance? Are they, are they not citizens in this state? Who you were, when sometimes um, ago, been, traveling be, between Benin to Wari oh. was become something else. It is this, the government of Delta State that did a palliative, uh, uh, carried out a palliative uh, measures on Benin uh, Wari Road to enable it uh, passable for the citizen. Why is the uh, Obasaki waiting for federal government? to come and intervene on a road within the state. We are not saying you should carry out a, 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 a total construction of the road, just to carry out a, a, an, a palliative measures for, to reduce the pains and the suffering of the people. He blatantly refused. So to what we have seen so far, that the government is not concerned about the development. Now, the, the industrial park uh, uh, that he talks about, the Gelegele Seaport, five years down the lane, Abbasaki will end up spending eight years in signing memorandum of understanding. But, 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 but we, have three, we have three more years to determine that, really. Okay, now, if you say we have three years, like the more he talks about, the more can be built maybe within two, three months. But the Gelegele Seaport that was signed, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, two, three or four years ago, to what extent have they built it? The industrial part that they signed the memorandum of understanding, to what extent have they developed it? Now, the problem is not even him signing the MOU or commencing uh, a project. Mm. We, have, we have also uh, understand that the government system, the governance system in Nigeria is discontinued as against a continual government in every other places. Now, you see that the Ada uh, project or rather legacies is being destroyed or abandoned by this present government. The, the, if you go to the museum, you will see the fountain that was built and the, what's the, the water fountain, fountain that the water is. The water fountain that was built has been, as you go to that place, it's like a desert. You see the water stone project has been abandoned. But so, the government raised very salient concerns about uh, the issues around uh, the water stone project, talked about how that uh, there had been misappropriation. That is the problem. Mm. Just the way his own administration is misappropriating funds for the same project that he has uh, embarked on. Now, the problem, why we are not progressing as a people or as a society, all the projects you see Godino Basaki, Godino, Godino Basaki uh, initiating will be abandoned or is likely to be abandoned by his successor. Perhaps because the person who initiated it either have uh, uh, in the, the, this administration or the previous administration has uh, bezeled the money made for the project, like he alleged. Likewise, the, the successor will come and also see that the, the safe form hmm. that was marked for this project have been embezzled. That, that's a vicious, so that's a vicious circle. Want, the successor will not want to continue with the project. Hmm. So, so at the end, you will not see that the, his administration will end up spending eight years without any meaningful development. I will spend eight years. I'll 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 politely ask that we wait and see uh, what the next three years will hold for us. Uh, by November, we, uh, we do not have to. By, by November 12th, I think the governor would have done one year into his first term in office. So uh, hopefully, we will keep our fingers crossed and uh, we'll stay alive long enough to see how it pans out. But let me talk to Engineer Ike in particular about the issue of commissioner lists. A lot of persons are saying, look, if the governor had commissioners in place, the job would have been much easier for him, would have had more hands to work and drive the mega project on behalf of his government. Is, is that what you think too? Yeah, well, first of all, hmm. uh, I need to congratulate the SMO Bini for his birthday. Okay. More years gracefully. Hmm. Uh, 
the commissioners still delay now is affecting a lot of things. Okay. One, you see, commissioner report to the governor. Oh. Chief engineer of that military report to the commissioners. So that this thing is affecting the infrastructure of this state right now. Look at what, what people benefit, what people see is road. One, they see good roads. Oh. They, they, they witness security, mm. but these things are not happening now in Edo State. Well, we're, we're going to take a quick break now, uh, then uh, we're going to continue this uh, conversation in a moment. Stay with us, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We are expecting um, a guest to call in uh, on the show uh, in a minute or two. But, but, but um, Engineer A.K. was making a point a while ago about the commissioners and all Yes, uh, we're talking about infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure development in those days is decaying very, very fast. And what people know a good government, mm -hmm. common people know about good government, good roads, security, then food. But now, as we are saying now, there, there are no good roads. Even the ones that are constructing before the rains set up, they will be abandoned. And the reason is that this governor cannot supervise all the ministry. No commissioners, till now, no commissioners. The commissioners report to indirectly. The chief engineer of that ministry reports to the commissioner. But as of today, there oh. is no commissioner. And when you look at these roads, like for instance, I take, look at Buyoko. A person goes to Ring Road to go and sell pure water of 2,000. Mm. And he will enter vehicle from Buyoko to Ring Road, 1,000. What does he make? Nothing. And apart from that, uh, that apart from the money, mm. before he gets to that place, it's four hours to Ring Road. No road. And when he gets home, he looks he look to, look to buy a door. I'm, I'm going to let, allow you to continue this uh, conversation in a minute. But uh, let, let's bring in somebody uh, who is going to just uh, lend his voice to the conversation quickly. Uh, Christopher Ojekere, thank you for joining us this morning on the program. Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, we've been talking about uh, development in Edo states and all of the, uh, as it were, peculiarities that we see now. Uh, in the last couple of months, uh, people have talked about uh, the need to have commissioners and advisors in place that the government needs to scale up on manpower as it were. What exactly have been your sentiments about developments in this state? Uh, with respect to development in the state, hmm. you must do a comparative analysis. Of course, by all means. Yeah, because if you are talking of development, it means going from one point of state of being to another. If it is positive, it is development. If it is not positive, it is under development. Mm. Judging by from when the governor came in up until this moment, we can record milestone development, first of all, in the way that the governor's business is being conducted in the state. I understand people's sentiments and I understand all the quarrels about not mm. appointing you know, commissioners and aides and all of that. Uh, without meaning to undermine those sentiments, I also want to point out that even at that, the Constitution mandated the governor to appoint commissioners and to appoint special advisors. But that very clause of the Constitution itself left a lot of discretionary paths to the governor. And in my opinion, the reason why that was done is because every government has its own peculiar governance type. Because the problems of governance and the problems a particular governor inherited are unique to that particular governor. So the constitution itself envisages the fact that the governor will need to have its own ambit to be able to operate, you know, his own governance style, choosing his moments and timelines. I don't think the governor has ever come out to say he wasn't going to appoint a or commissioner. Or I don't think he has said that he's particularly mandated to do that. We are 
I always say, let him do it. But we shouldn't make it appear as if the, because that he hasn't done it. It means, therefore, that we are going to throw away the baby with the bathwater and say the governor has done nothing. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me bring something. Hello, hello. Chris, if, are you yes. still there? I'm here. Yeah. Let, let me bring something to your attention quickly. Yes. Would we not be setting double standards if you see after ten months of being yes. in office, a governor had not appointed commissioners or eight overall, yes. and then in 2015 it took President Muhammadu Buhari six months to appoint uh, put cabinet in place, and we said we had yes. a problem with that. Would that be double standard? Now, who, who is who is who is who is setting the standard? Which standards are we talking about here? You have to. I like to look at yes. Hello. Yes, go ahead and talk to us. Go ahead. I like to look at situations peculiarly. I, I believe in taxonomical analysis. Mm. I take a particular situation and I classify it and I analyze it. I mean, there is no uniform standard for governors anywhere to appoint commissioners or ministers, whatever. What I want to see is that the government is not idle, it's not docile, it's not stupid. It's appraising and it's delivering results. That's what I want to see. I admit that commissioners have to be appointed is statutory. I also admit that the commissioner, uh, the constitution makes room for discretionary, you know, uh, 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 provisions for that, for the government to choose when to do that. So, are we having transition committee in place in a dossier? We, we have transition committee in place. It met with a lot of stakeholders. It met with us, the civil society group. It met with professional bodies. Explaining templates that are being laid in place. So that after all these templates have been laid, it is that the two people is talking to others, the two people relating to him. Mm. After I have laid down this template, I will ask the commissioner that will deliver on this template. We seem to take feeling positions, and we seem to replace results, uh, you know, measurable deliverables and result orientation uh, with feeling positions. Those feeling positions are not having any template to run on, and then you begin to, you know, rig my route there. For me, that's result orientation. If you have a template that you have a plan as a governor, and you are able to lay out that vision and that plan. Mm. Once the man hits the gun, they hit the gun running and they start delivering results. That's what I want to see. So when we begin to talk about 10 months and 10 months, we can have 10 months of doing nothing. We can have 10 months of jaggery. What I want to see is that the governor has a vision. Mm. He has, he has, he's sticking to his mega manifesto, the discipline agenda, and he's putting in place template. So the transition committee was put in place. They have met with several stakeholders. What would you just now say? Okay, Governor, now all of this has been done. Please appoint Commissioner. But to take it up as a political campaign weapon and begin to wish sentiments all over the place, for me, it's not development in itself. Development must be able to articulate, you know, what the Governor is doing, articulate the policies he's putting in place, and look at it. You know, from that objective point of view, that's how I just want to see. Just before, so, I, just, before, having, just before I let you off, just before, yeah, I let, just before I let you off, Chris, I can hear you yeah. right. Yeah, before I let you off, I understand you have a busy day ahead of you. But just one more yeah. question, right? Uh, the Gele Gele issue, uh, the governor had talked extensively and very passionately about the Gele Gele projects even before yeah. he became governor in 2016. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's done essentially five years into a two term uh, governorship. Uh, so yes. I say, look, that the, if you consider the magnitude and, of course, the, the breadth and length of that project, uh, yes. there's a pretty good chance that uh, it's not going to come to fruition, all right, yes. within the eight years of Governor Basaki at Osadebe Avenue. Yes. What exactly is your evaluation of that project and the, I mean, whether or not it's still a, a realistic uh, venture as it stands right now? Yes, I, I try not to threaten and intimidate people away from having big things. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just want to be sure that what you are saying is true. If you cannot achieve it within the timeline in which you have said it, government is a continuum. Of course. The next government ought to continue with it. It's a huge financing project. It's not a project that you can finance with a dosage budget. Mm. It's not even a project that you can finance easily from local finance. It's a huge financing project. So he has the plan and he has the template. What you should interrogate is that is there a plan for illegally? Is there a template? How far have you gone? I think Basaki's greatest weakness is that he is not as communicative with the people as he should be. Mm -hmm. You have to go and investigate these things and dig them out to be sure that they are there. And that is why a lot of people, you know, people want to be informed and told. This is the point that we are at now, and that's the point we are moving to. Gilgale is a reality. It is going on. There are infrastructure projects being put in place. The road to Gilgale, I didn't know it before. I knew it this time. Now, there's a template for it. If 
financing is being pursued. It's a huge financing for you. Know, for, uh, for, uh, uh, something that uh, in the direct into billions of dollars. So he might not be able to achieve it. But that doesn't mean I should threaten him and intimidate him not to have big dreams for Edo State. Mm. Let us have big dreams. If not better just let them out as simply. If you can't complete them, let the other government complete them. But let it be running. Right. It is for Edo State. And we, we cannot say chasing him all of these things. No. We have to pursue them to a logical conclusion. So I think uh, he might not be able to complete it, but that doesn't mean that illegally will not be completed. It has to be completed. Right. Chris, I want to thank you especially question. for yes. uh, making our time, I mean, cracking up your initiative this morning to be part of the program. Yes, thank you. Oh, you enjoy the rest thank of the day. So, so let me come back to you, uh, Engineer AK. I've spoken with people of the records. I mean, I've talked to people away from TV. And they say that Governor Baseki enjoyed so much of goodwill last year during the election that he doesn't want to throw that goodwill away, that he's definitely going to deliver to Edo people, that that's a given, it is guaranteed. You were here on two occasions in the build-up to the election last year. Yes. We talked about him. You were passionate about this man. Yeah. All right? You, you, you informally endorsed him on this program. As it stands today, has your faith waned in any way? Yes, thank you very much. My, my faith has derailed and almost regretting for that outburst I made. In the first case that I don't know him before, and he doesn't know me. But I followed him closely mm. on sympathy level because of the humiliation he suffered from the other side. That, it, that people voted for him, three parties voted for him. Three parts. One for the, AP, for the APC he carried down. Some people on three party level. For me, I voted for him on Peter and I was campaigning for him. Thinking that by this time now, he will consolidate the gains of the four years. Okay. To decide, but look at what is happening. It's, it's, it's an eyesore. Ordinary Owina Road off Aboma is at standstill because the contractors that in charge, these are quack contractors, does not know their left from their right. Who use a spoon and knife to, 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 to do gutter? Because most of those things that are happening before in those days, when the Gomdia and Abu Salim named them, they, are, they, they constitute a tender board. A tender board com com comprises of all the professionals before a job is being awarded to somebody. Mm. They will know your competence. But this time around, just give it to somebody else. At the end of the day, nothing happens. And nobody queries them. One, the, the chief executive, which is him, nobody reports to him. The commissioner is supposed to report to him. They are not available. The chief engineer cannot go directly to him. Who will supervise the job? Most of the jobs are abandoned. Even when the rain are not setting. But we have seen the permanent secretaries of different ministries, uh, I mean, coming out to, to see how much they can do in light of the circumstances that we're dealing with. Nothing, 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 nothing's happening. Nothing. Okay. I, I, I wanted to just hold on a little. Uh, let me talk to Osaze again. I mean, yourself and Curtis, you're, you're visible players within the space of civil uh, society in, in, the, in this state. What would I have thought by now you'd be having this back and forth, these constant engagement with the governor and with those uh, in his team, no matter how limited that team may be, as it stands right now. How much of guidance is civil society in Edosi providing for this government today? Well, you see, we, we, we try as much as possible to refrain from some certain actions. Mm. Um, if you listen to what uh, OJ Chris said, he, the, himself a civil servant and a civil servant, uh, I'm uh, I mean, sorry, a, a civil <laughs> society man. Uh, but, he, <laughs> but, but he appears to sound so he appears to be that of a spokesperson for the government. But that aside, everybody has a right to, to take a position. Oh. Uh, you, have, you have an inalienable right to take a position on issues that borders on governors. Now, we try to maintain some steady stance so as not to dismiss us as working for the opposition. But the reality is, we, we just say the truth, how the society can be moved forward. But why we don't do society things is because when you begin to engage government on a, at an intense capacity or at an intense level, there's this, uh, other people, there's this practice here in the say that you are easily dismissed as working for the opposition. Or they see you as somebody doing that because you want to have access into government. That's what their notion is. But at any rate, we try to engage government at different levels to ensure that things are done adequately. But you see, Ojeke mentioned one thing, that it's one of the issues with government that government has not engaged the people. That he, he could do more in the area of communication. Good. Oh. And that is an issue we have been having with this present administration. As a matter of fact, we have asked this administration to always 
engage people in a town hall meeting. And you see, government is just running. You don't even know what government is doing part time. Nobody have an idea what government is doing and how to contribute your own quota as a citizen. So it becomes difficult for you to actually take certain positions mm. on certain issues, not on not on 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 areas that you are able to investigate yourself, do a, a research around yourself. But the government is not forthcoming. The the girl you mentioned now, right. or the Benin Seaport as it is uh, Christian, nobody knows what is happening there today. There are other projects I know the government might be doing, but we are at loss at which project is this government doing. But the government must be able to feed the purse of the people. If you go out today and take a pool of what we are discussing in the studio today, you, you agree with us that people will admit, we admit that they are not feeling the impact of government as it's where today. So the reason is because government don't do needs assessment. Because it, as a government, you should be able to know what the people need, to know areas of concentration. So you, you don't just sit down at the comfort of your office and begin to design policies, begin to design projects that will not meet the yearnings of the people. I think that's the situation we have in those states. When last did Governor Basaki had a media chat in, in the city, if he has ever had one. Where well, last did, he, did go, uh, go, go to Obaseki, engage different people in the town hall meetings? Let them provide solutions. Do you know why the, 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 the first uh, private property uh, law feed? There was no consultation. The, they had to go back to the House of Assembly to reenact on that one. Even at that, there's no consultation. The stakeholders that are involved in land grabbing, we are not consulted. Now, do you think such a policy will see the light of day? There's no communication. And government is not run like that. Like as a, a engineer said, the civil servant, which are, which are, uh, which, the civil servant, the, the permanent secretaries, oh. cannot implement <laughs> the manifesto of a political party. They don't have the political will. So when people are aiming for commissioners, now people, as, so people are arguing that uh, the government is saving money because they are not commissioners. They don't understand that that money is better for the government to spend money and let those commissioners interpret the mind of the political party as we got development. A commissioner can come to ITV today now and say, ah, I don't like this color. Can, can we change it? But a PS cannot do that. It has to go by way of memo, bureaucracy, mm. and all of that. Mm. But there's what a commissioner can do, rely on his on this political position to drive development. A commissioner can be driving and see a bad spot and issue a state and give an order that the black spot should be fixed. And before you know it, communicate to the governor, the governor gives the approval. But the APS can never do that. If the APS will have to write memo, send to maybe to the SSG, go to the governor before it goes up and down. Maybe one year we are still on it. But a commissioner in their caucus meeting. I just discussed with the government that ah, so so road we have an issue. You know mm. those people they give us uh, mm. votes. You know we see a tickling of an eye. That is fist. That is why we need commissioners. Mm. Not because of the amount they are collecting. Yes. Because they need to judge the government. Because every political party is supposed to have a manifesto, even though we know that in Nigeria right. we don't rely on manifesto. Mm. But this is what the commissioner is supposed to be doing to implement what the political party promised the citizens. Mm. which a permanent secretary who is a civil servant yes. cannot do it is like that anywhere okay great uh, uh, let me talk to you curtis uh, a lot of persons have also said look let's cut the governor some slack look at the impact that covid 19 has had on economies across the world including of course that of nigeria and in particular in this case that of Edo states and that the governor is leveraging his experience from the private sector and even from uh, the couple of years he has spent uh, being the governor here in Edo states to ensure that he continues to drive development real time. Is it also realistic to, to uh, as it were, integrate the realities brought about by COVID-19 into some of the challenges that we are grappling with in this state? Yes, again, um, the COVID-19, the negative impact of the COVID-19 mm. shouldn't also be an excuse for the government not to perform. Because it is during this COVID-19 era that the election was conducted, that he was ushered into the second term of his administration. So that shouldn't be 
Because again, like every other world, it's it, it not particular about uh, specific about Nigeria. It, 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 uh, it's also affected every other uh, part of the world. So to us, this, the state government appears to be an alive, a lot of wisdom. Like uh, a comrade here said that you can't just sit down somewhere and start uh, developing policies. You need to reach out to the people because whatever policies that you are making or you are implementing, it has to do with the people. So I also let him to know that this so administration is it will not it will not it will not help the good people of Edo State because whoever that set itself up as judge of over truth and knowledge is being shipwrecked by the latter because talking about the engagement that you you, you once mentioned, you are seeing that the gov the governor is not communicating with the people. Times who have even protested or do a rally. You see the governor tried one word or the other not to interface with the people. Randa said that the deputies or the other person. So he shying away from the responsibility of engaging the people. Now again, going back to the to the uh, Chris, the caller, that the, the, the uh, government is, uh, or under governance is a uh, continuum. I want to uh, disagree with him that in this part of the world, Nigeria and specifically in the state, gov governance or government is not continuum. It is discontinued. Now, like he mentioned that the, the, he may not be able to comp complete the, the project that oh. have initiated, that is the successor will take it off from there. How many of the predecessors' uh, projects did the uh, governor Basaki uh, continue? You see the, the library that had just been destroyed by the governor. That was, it, was a, it was a capital project during, a, that, um, during the Lockheed era. That today, he's been, the, that project is being destroyed. So, governance, the major problem... But the government also has proposed something else that will be put on the ground there. Okay, now, by way now of also why, why not jobs. renovate? Why not renovate that library? Why, why Saplen Road? What happened to Upper Saplen Road? What happened to places like uh, Upper Saplen uh, maybe Riri and all that? Are this, are are this central? Are this central enough? Of, it, it, does it have to be central? Does it have to be Saplen Road? Does it have to be Ring Road? What happened to maybe places like Upper Gi after bypass? Don't you know certain such and... Uh, 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 infrastructure will also bring development to that exactly, area. Yes. So you have a crowd in that place. There is already an existing uh, infrastructure in that place. Why destroying it in quest to bring up uh, uh, another another infrastructure? Where are there are places that, like Upper Sakumba, for instance, it has not has, does it have any impact? Impact of government? You don't feel any visible uh, infrastructure, government infrastructure mm -hmm. over there. Now going back to assessing government, the control provide for the. Uh, for the security and welfare of oh, the citizens. That is the first responsibility given to every government. Once the people is not secure, the people are not welfare, absolutely the, the government has failed. Like I will I will complain something that the gov the government by security administration have woefully failed over there is nothing reasonable, most especially the area of security. As we speak. Now, I do say that any government that wants that still relied on the federal government as it stands right now, or that still rely on the uh, federal government agencies in securing the life and property of the state, the government must be a coward. Permit me no, to no, you, that no, you can't. You can't. You know, you can't. You can't use that. You can't, you can't say I'm that. I'm not no. particular about those no, things. No, I'm talking about it generally. You, you can't. You can't say that. that no, you, no, you can't. You can't say that in a state because it, I, no, no, no. I, 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 I know, for example, that I know that the government has even engaged. I am not referring to the issue. I'm talking about the issue. The issue of insecurity is not particular. Is there any government? Any government across the state where we have people where we we have people like you have seen in those states. There are thousands of Edo youth that are ready to take up arms. That is why we have this local security arrangement. You see them carrying weapons all over the state. Has the state mobilized them? But it has also been the lifetime of this government that we have seen. Yes, it example. was. You talked about you <laughs> talked about what the civil society have done over time to ensure that these policies are uh, uh, implemented. When the civil society also make recommendation on certain policies. The government, their own, in their own smartness, will implement those policies without conduct, uh, co uh, consulting those who initiate the ideas. Mm. This security, this local security, was also initiated by the civil societies. I do also for During the, the NSAS uh, saga, to, to, to quickly uh, 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 create the, uh, the negative mm. impact of that. Also no, 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 don't also forget there were instances where even the civil society were attacked by agent of government. Of course. Even while they try to. to 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 learn their voices mm. to some societies that are not going well in the society. Several occasions, like when the, the, the came up on the central hospital, mm. the specialist hospital that oh, the community so cannot, I, I mean, that cannot afford to date. The civil society will attack. Uh, okay, gentlemen. Yeah, anyway, we're 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 quickly on this uh, insecurity in the state. Now we have 
thousands of Edoyus ready to, to risk their life in defending the citizens of the state. A close us also uh, uh, told us not too long ago that the state government have refused the local security uh, uh, volunteers to, to go into the, the, the forest and most certainly the, the Benin and Uchiru to comb that place and these persons are ready. The government, it seems the government is not concerned. Of course, we cannot, not we, we, we cannot okay, independently talking about security, 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 security of yourself. Yes. Talking yes. about the security, uh, the civil society engagement, mm. are you also aware that it was the, the peaceful protest, the SRP because of the attack on the peaceful protesters during mm. the NSAS that led to the to the uh, crisis oh. that degenerated to the crisis. So what are we saying? The government, when the civil society, we have we have that the people at heart. Oh. We always want to engage. So at that engagement, of course, by all means, needs to continue yes, with but the government. The government listening. Th th to, thank to, you to so much. Decision. So let's wrap it up, uh, gentlemen. Let me talk to Engineer Ike for the last time. Uh, in, in one minute, <laughs> what should government be doing in a those state right now so that we can move past this level of conversation and up the answer a little? In the first case, mm. the governor should come out of his shelf and talk to people. Okay. Let he should engage. engage more. Yes, he should engage people. He mm. should talk. Mm. But I know that everybody has his own uh, uh, evidence. He's a quiet person, man. But with the situation in, on, on ground now, mm. let this man get out of his shelf and talk to people, communicate with people, and get their feelings. Mm. Security is worse. Infrastructure is zero. Yeah, so the thing is getting worse. Okay, great, gentlemen. Uh, thank you uh, for making our time to be part of the program this morning. Turns out this is what we're living in. So, Sazed again, Curtis Obebo, and Engineer Mike. Okay, thank you for coming on the program. We appreciate it. So, we're taking a quick break. We're back shortly to have a few more interviews on the program. Stay with us. <laughs>